So uh, I'm Mark Woodmill. Um, I'm the UK sales manager for the aftermarket. Uh, I've worked for Comma for 27 years now, so I've spent a long time within within the business. Uh, I'm in the sales function at the moment, but my previous in my previous life in Comma, I was in the marketing team and did an awful lot of the product development for the business. So understanding the trends of vehicles uh, and basically looking at when we needed to introduce new products and the reasons why. Great, Andrew. Okay. Hi everyone, my name is Andrew Carter. I'm the senior technical advisor at, at, at Comma Oils. So I work in the technical department looking at the formulations, making sure of the, the OEM approvals are all up to standard, making sure the specifications and the products that we put out into the market are the best quality that they can be. Um, I've not been with the company as long as Mark, but I'm, I'm coming on three and a half years now, um, 10 years in total in the lubricants industry. Great. So what you've got in front of you, apart from me, are some experts in oil. And what we're going to look at is what the future of oil is going to look like for workshops, how it's going to impact your business. So engine oil, for a lot of the workshops, I'm sure, it's always there. It's always part of it. But it seems to be getting very complicated now. I've had some people on the stand yeah. asking questions about why are there so many different types. Mark, give us a bit of an insight on what is going on. Well, some of those questions have been, can we just have one oil? But that, that doesn't exist. Okay. Uh, but before we start looking at kind of uh, where we are today, we wanted to just go back about 10 years, just to give people an example of uh, how things have changed in the past 10 years. So if you go back to 2013, we used to have 17 different engine oil grades. The vast majority of those were 5W30, because that was the viscosity of choice for the vehicle manufacturers. We had three 0Ws. So you know, they were only just starting to come out then, the 0W40s and 0W30s. And if you take Ford, for example, Ford were generally one of the easiest manufacturers to specify a product for. For many, many years, we had one product that pretty much went in the vast majority of Fords. Fast forward 10 years, we've now got 26 different engine oils, so that's nearly wow. one new one every single year. Yeah? We've got 12 zero W grades, and that's just showing the direction that kind of vehicle manufacturers are going to. Much thinner, thinner products. And, you know, we've had an awful lot of them come out in the past. So, so you promise it's not just oil companies making more product needlessly. This is because it's the, it's the there's a reason. It's not us, it's the vehicle. You promise? <laughs> Correct. Okay, so why? What, how do we dig into this a bit more? Well, it, sorry, if we just go back to Ford as the example. Go back. God, very quick. <laughs> if you go back to Ford, for example, if you go back 10 years, there's one grade. Now we need at least four for Ford. So four, even Ford are becoming even more complicated. Okay. So, and if you move on, you know, why, are things, why are things getting complicated? It's fundamentally legislation driving that, EU, EU legislation. Um, vi trying to get the vehicle emissions down. You've got uh, issues ar around the powertrains. So you've got whether it's an ICE vehicle, a hybrid, whether it's uh, a plug-in hybrid. But vehicle manufacturers are moving to much smaller, higher revving engines now. And the reasons they're doing that it's because turbochargers have allowed them to do that. Great thing about turbochargers is they give a lot more power, and we're going to talk about a bit more in detail for, for turbochargers later, but they run really hot. So it makes the engine and everything in, in that engine and the oil a lot hotter than it used to be. Extended service intervals, so the oil drain is being basically extended from 12,000 to 15,000, up to 20,000 miles, so the oil's in there for longer. We've got after-treatment units, so most of you guys in here will be knowing about diesel particulate filters. You've got VW with petrol particulate filters, so that's new bits of kit. You've got EGR, so exhaust gas recirculation, creates a lot of bad byproducts in, as part of that, and which basically uh, gets into the engine oil and into the sump. Timing belt changes, so traditional timing belts to timing chains, uh, and a subject that we're going to talk a bit, uh, a bit more detail on is a wet timing belts. So now, where the timing belt's actually in the oil and coming into contact with it. And then stop-start systems. So, you know, uh, a stop-start system is on pretty much every vehicle now. Uh, what happens there? The oil, every time it stops, drops back into the sump and it's got to get back around the system really, really quickly. So you need these thinner zero W grades to do that. So all of these technological advances are designed to meet uh, legislation, but the impact of them is a harder working engine, more moving parts. Absolutely. Okay, great. So, should we look at a specific? Yeah. So, we've got an example here of the most popular vehicle in the UK. 
the Ford Fiesta, so the humble Fiesta. So we're going to look at what the Fiesta, Fiesta looks like in 2020 versus 2005. So we've got the Boyer Racer Edition. So we've got the uh, two-litre ST in its race trim. Very nice. Very nice. Yep. 150 horsepower out of that vehicle back in 2005. Service interval every 12,000 miles or every year. And it used a 530. So that one product, that X-Tech, was going in, into, the, into the vehicle. Fast forward 15 years, same vehicle, but different technology. You've got a one litre EcoBoost engine now. It's now fitted with a turbocharger, which it didn't have before, and it's generating 155 horsepower. So even more horsepower than the two litre engine from 15 years ago. So you can just see the kind of the differences there. Uh, the new Fiesta is a mild hybrid system. It's got an extended service interval of 15,000 miles. 15, is it? 18,000, which is a 50% increase yeah. over, over the previous generation. Yeah. So it's a hybrid engine, smaller engine, higher revving, turbochargers fitted to it, longer service interval, a stop-start system that the old vehicle didn't have, and this one's got a wet timing belt, not a timing chain. So there's lots of technology changes okay. just in the Fiesta. So just so he's not stood there, yeah. not, can I bring Andrew in on this? So let's talk about a smaller, higher revving engine. What impact technically does that have on the oil? What's, what's happening with the oil? So, so like Mark mentioned, the, the smaller, higher revving engines are generating more heat, which is putting more strain on your engine oil. So, yeah. And the, the, the more strain you're putting on your engine oil, the, the engine is already quite a hostile environment for your oil to be operating in. And the, the higher temperature that it's operating at, the quicker it starts to oxidize. So there's a general rule. So for every 10 degrees Celsius that you go above 75 degrees, the oxidation reaction will actually start to double. So the more time that this, the, the oil spends at higher temperature, the quicker the product is starting to break down. The more it breaks down, the less uh, of an impact it has on lubricating your engine. And as Mark mentioned, you have a stop-start system. And the longer that's, that the product's at high temperature, the more it starts to thicken as it oxidizes, and that stop-start system starts to get affected by the fact that the oil can't move around as quickly anymore. And what about the intervals? Like this one, I think, what did you say? It jumps to think, two years. Yeah. 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 So, so, so the, 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 the extended drainage intervals are causing just as much of, of an issue for, for, for manufacturers of, uh, of lubricants as... When you blend an oil, it's made up of two components. You have a, a base oil and you have additives. Additives in their use are actually sacrificial. So as certain things are happening within the engine, those additives are then used up. Once they're gone, they, they are gone. And now what's happening is where we were sitting at 12,000 miles drainage interval, you're now doing 25, 50% longer with certain OEMs, and the product is still having to protect for just as long. So me being smart and thinking, not taking my car in for that oil change for a bit, actually I've screwed my car up, haven't I? Pretty much, yes. Yeah, great, okay, great. Uh, this is what I learned when we did the rehearsal and I was quite upset to hear it as well. I thought I was being quite smart. Okay, so there's tons of different key differences. You're lucky we're not gonna go into all of them, but we picked out a couple of them. The turbocharger, the wet timing belt. Let's have a look at a couple of these in a bit in a bit more detail, I think. So turbochargers, Mark? Yeah, well, before we go through the technical stuff, let's just look at the benefits of the turbocharger. Sure. Yeah, for OEMs, really, really a great bit of kit. Yeah, allows them to get all of those emissions down. Uh, but much better fuel economy, allows vehicle manufacturers to have lower emissions, much higher torque, much higher power. But they actually generate extreme heats, which is where a lot of the issues come around. So if you I don't know if there are many in the crowd that actually realize that turbo can actually spin at about 240,000 RPM. Extremes, a really silly amount of RPM and generate over 900 degrees C of temperatures. So really extreme temperatures that they can generate. So there's loads of benefits, but it sounds like it's a much harder working yeah. bit of kit. What? And all of those moving parts have got to be protected by the oil. Okay, and what happens, what happens if you put the wrong oil in? What would... So using the, the, the wrong oil could lead to a catastrophic failure with your turbocharger. Like, okay. like we've mentioned, the 95% of turbo failures are caused by, the, by lubrication. 95%? Yeah, okay. 95. And that's down to using the incorrect specification, extending the drainage interval further than what it should. And like Mark mentioned, you, you're getting temperatures up to 900 degrees Celsius. The oxidation of that oil is going to be rapid. It's going to happen so quickly, and it's going to block all the, the crucial 
inlets that are used to lubricate their turbocharger, leading to seizure. And I, and I guess consumers haven't got, they, they don't realize this sort of change has happened in terms of the technology. To the, I guess the work, who's at, who's at a workshop here? Stick your hand up if you've got, uh, from a workshop. Do, are you fully aware of all of those changes? No. Great, one person's learned something. I've achieved my goal, that's excellent. Okay, um, well, let's look at another sort of area, which was a whole new world to me when you told me about this the other day, wet timing belts. Uh, let's go to Andrew on the wet timing belts. Yep. Go for it. Um, tell me more. <laughs> so, so the difference between a wet timing belt and what, what's been uh, in the past is your, your standard timing belt or a timing chain is the belt actually runs through the engine oil. And the reason this has come in is, once again, fuel efficiency benefits, CO2 emissions reductions like we discussed before. The lubrication of the engine oil helps to... Uh, give OEMs fuel efficiency benefits, which they can then trade off for CO2 emission reductions. Okay, so you've got a belt running through a closed part of the engine. Yes. So more complicated than it used to be, harder to access. It, yeah, exactly. It's, it's a lot more complicated. So we, we, when engine oils are, are formulated, you have to worry about compatibility with different metals and different seals right. within the engine. This is just another component that's now being introduced that also has to have some form of compatibility. You pick the wrong oil that goes into that, you're going to start getting timing belt degradation. You're going to have bits falling off of it, which actually end up in your sump, and they block the, the, the oil pickup, and that leads to starvation of, of lubrication to your engine. And in terms of sort of car stock that's out there on the road, is it anything made recently is wet timing belts? Is there a, is there a sort of figure... I'm going to put you on the spot slightly. No, is it newer know. cars that have faced with it, this rather than older? It, it, it'll vary across different vehicles. I think it's predominantly probably more looking at, at petrol vehicles and your newer age petrol right. vehicles. Diesel seem to still be sticking around chains. Okay, okay. So we've talked about high temperature issues. Um, I was on the stand earlier. A lot of people were talking about uh, low temperature issues, or they, they, yeah. they didn't know that, but that, that's what you informed me they were talking about indirectly. So, and this is really to do with the hybrid challenge. So let's start with Andrew, I think, on this one. Yeah, yeah you lucky boy. <laughs> so um, why do hybrid vehicles operate at lower temperatures? Let's start there. Okay, so with, with, with hybrid engines, obviously you've, you've got the battery as well as your internal combustion engine. But the internal combustion engine will only start working once you reach a certain speed or when it's required to recharge the battery. So if you look on the graph that we have there, the, the red curve is a standard internal combustion engine. You can see the, 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 the steady curve that it has over time to get up to temperature, whereas there's a very stop-start up and down uh, stepping of the, the hybrid engines. And that's because of the stop-start system switching between your internal combustion engine and your battery. And this um, delicious looking white... It is delicious. Yeah. Does anyone <laughs> recognize the white sludge? Put your hands up if you recognize the white sludge, because I didn't. Okay. Do you know what it is? Okay, you can't hear. He got it completely wrong. Tell him what it actually is. <laughs> it's spot on. Oh, okay, you got it spot on. You got it spot, spot on. on. It, it, it's water. So um, a byproduct of the internal combustion engine is it generates water. You've got heat with, with cold sides. Water leaks down. Once the, the engine oil is no longer able to actually hold that water in suspension, it forms an emulsion. And, that's the, and what, why, is that, why is that bad for a hybrid? Or well, any well, it, it, it happens more in hybrids because of the, the, the colder engine temperature, whereas your standard internal combustion engines run hotter and it actually ends up burning off a lot more of that water. Okay. The problem with that is it contains water, which would lead to corrosion within the engine. So that would, over time, impact, lead to corrosion? Yeah, it would okay. lead to corrosion. Yeah. How, do you how do you prevent it? Excellent. He's got a new job. More frequent <laughs> oil changes. He's, did you exactly. pay him to come in here? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so, so it is to do with, you'll get that more if you're not changing regularly? You get that, and uh, along with using uh, older technology for, for newer vehicles, they don't have the same uh, capability to hold that, the, the water in suspension, the same way your newer technologies are, are, are able to add a bit more into them just to combat okay. that water okay. buildup. So... Just to recap so far, engine technology is changing to meet regulation and will continue to do so. 
Yeah. We're all sure that regulation will continue to impact any business, but you know, certainly the manufacture of vehicles. Yep. So what's coming next? And do you want to take... Yeah, I'll, I'll take that if you move to the next one. Uh, I mean, basically, technology is going to continue like it has done over the past couple of years. If you just move on one, it's effectively going to, it's going to be lower viscosities. So we're seeing, we've got 0.16s, but there's discussions around 0.12, 0.08. So it's just going to get thinner and thinner, uh, the, the engine oil. More specifications with all of the different compatibility issues. You need a higher quality product. So high quality, long life products are going to continue. Um, and over the next couple of years, we're expecting to see at least another one vehicle specific product every, every year. So it's just going to continue to grow the portfolio. And we're at 26 grades at the moment. Okay, so you, but you just see that continuing on and on and okay. Vehicle so, manufacturers are just making it more. So, so our friend over here, how is he meant to pick what the? Is it what a segue? Which twenty six? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you make the selection and how do you stock so, it? So, at Common, we make it really, really simple, and it's it's on our website. Uh, can you skip on, please, Ed. Yes, boss. Thank you. <laughs> Gone too far, Ed. Yes, boss. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so basically on the website we've got our free barrel and look up for any of you that have used it it's a really useful simple tool but one thing that we do different to our competition is we actually back it up with our 100% compatibility guarantee which is on the recommendation uh, you can also print out that guarantee so you can give that to your customer so as part of the service receipt wallet you've also given them a guarantee and if you sign up for our free workshop program you can brand that with your workshop name and telephone number so it makes selection really, really simple. And the VRM lookup on our system is free of charge. And then when it comes to stocking of products, we've got an excellent tool called the Stock Profile Intel. So we basically look at, we need to know three pieces of information from a workshop. We need to know, do you service all, all makes of vehicle? Or are you a mark specialist? How many vehicles do you service a month? And what county are you in? because the data goes all the way down to a very local level. So it's a very bespoke stock profile for okay. workshops. And then what we do is that will break into, we basically say you need 200 litres, you'll use 41 litres of this, 32 litres of that, and we'll also recommend a pack size for you as well, just, just to make life simple. Okay. So finding the right size pack sizes. Okay. We haven't got long left, and they're all thrilled with everything they've told, we've told them so far, but if they've got extra questions... Stand F90 over there. Absolutely. Yeah, and if you, you've got a workshop and you want to look at how that gets stocked, they can come talk to you Absolutely. guys. Dig in, okay, dig into a bit more. Does anyone have a question about what we've been talking about? Yes. Sorry, I came in halfway through. Um, Should we start again? No, you can. No, okay. <laughs> With the increase of ethanol, and that increases the water and the emulsion, have you had to change oil products to compensate for that, or is it just more frequent oil changes? So it'll probably be a combination of both of those. You, you, you'll look at, um, it, I'm already, you already sort of see some OEMs are starting to reduce the, the drainage intervals on, on the, I mean, I drive a Ford Focus. Uh, when I bought the vehicle, I think it was telling me 16 or 18,000 miles, it's now 12,000. So they've already started to reduce it. Um, and, and it'll be a combination of, of, as new additives are coming in, new technology is being developed, we'll start to look at a combination of, of better technology along with slightly reduced drainage intervals. Okay. Any uh, last questions? Hopes, dreams, ambitions? We'll listen to anything. In that case, a round of applause for the guys, and thank thanks you. for joining us. Guys. Thank you.